Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. You know, this is a fairly long uh, video. It's a very tedious job. Lots of finish, lots of install, sump pump, catch basins, concrete cutting, channel drain. And again, I apologize for the length of the video, but this was one large install. And this is the type of install that we usually get. I hope that it helps you understand all that's needed to do these type of installs. And I promise you, you can do it yourself. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are in a town called Claremont, Florida. It's about an hour from Orlando. And what we're doing is we're putting in some channel drains inside pavers. Let's take a look. So this is kind of a complicated uh, install. Basically what we've got to do is pull up all these pavers from right there where Chuck's digging and Joe's pulling up the pavers. This is a three car garage. So it's a long channel drain as you can see comes all the way over to here. Once those pavers are up, we'll go ahead and trench the area and we're gonna set our NDS channel drain inside of a concrete bed. That's the best way to, to get that channel drain to stay there so that it doesn't float up. So the first thing you gotta do is pull up pavers, get them out of the way. We're also gonna be putting a channel drain over in front of this garage. So now it's a four car garage. <laughs> and everything, they already have existing downspout drains. They come over here to an existing sump pump here in the yard. So we're gonna actually be tying into that existing drain once it's all dug up. And we'll show you those connections as well. So made quick work of pulling the pavers. That's kind of tough, but you can see there's a lot of pavers that were removed. Same thing on the other side over there. We pulled up all those pavers because we're setting, setting our second channel drain there. And as you look at this from here, you can see it's got fall, but water was still pooling over there in front of that garage door. So we need something to gather that water so that it can be drained. This line is gonna tie into this downspout right here, which again, runs over to the sump pump. So probably the most important thing that you need to find is the drain that you're tying into. Remember, we're not putting a new pipe in here, we're tying into existing drains. And you can kind of see that there's the corrugated pipe that's coming from the downspouts right here. And we need to make a real good connection to that. This line will eventually turn and run all the way over to a sump pump over there in that garden bed over there. So Joe's digging that up and Chuck's taking the pick and coming through here. We need to have a trench for the trench drain, the channel drain. We're about four inches from the first course of pavers. That's our guide. So we need that those to stay in place as we uh, trench. We're also going to be putting in some drains over here and you can see that low spot right there where it goes into the door. See that depression in the pavers. This is just a paver, paver job. But we need to put a catch basin over here and a sump pump in order to get this water to drain back to the lake. There's actually a lake back there behind that shed and it's all pavers all the way. Just a discharge line coming through here. <clears throat> Hopefully we can stay right there in the gravel, but you can see we have to cross the pavers a couple of times to get back to that lake. Another course of pavers out there as well. In addition, right here in this corner, we need to put a, a catch basin. This flood's pretty bad right here, so we need to get something to drain that. That will be a gravity drain as it comes out and goes over the hill to the lake. So if you remember, we're putting a catch basin up there by the door because these pavers have all slanted back that direction dramatically and that just floods right into the laundry room or the utility room. Be prepared, when you pull pavers in an older home, you can see there's actually a concrete walk here, a patio with, with pavers already cemented down and so we've got to cut that out so be prepared to do a lot of extra work each time that you excavate you, you don't know what's underground it's almost impossible to say but you can see the wood rot see the little sill plate there it's just you know totally rotting away there definitely needs to be a drain here and what we're doing is we're bringing from where you see Joe there's a low spot by that door we're going to end up putting a catch basin there right inside the pavers. You can see how it dips down right here. You see that little dip beyond the trash bag there. And we're going to put a catch basin there. It's going to come over, tie into the sump basin. The sump pump is going to lift it up and then it's inch and a half pipe 
right alongside the pavers. We found another giant pad here, which is connected to the well, and the well head's right there. So we're going to pull a few pavers here. We'll trench down through alongside that concrete pad. It'll turn and go over to the catch basin. At that point, if we have enough gravity from there to accept the pump, we'll, we'll tie it into that system. If not, inch and a half pipe will continue alongside of the four inch pipe, which is going to still run all the way out to the lake. So we've made some cuts with a concrete saw because there was another sidewalk, another patio underneath of these pavers. We're putting a catch basin right here and where I'm coming to there will be inch and a half pipe from the pump that comes into this line then gravity takes over and sends it on out to the lake. So you can see Joe's popping these out of here. You just need a pry bar and you hit it just like a jackhammer until it cracks. And these are big pieces. I mean, I can see that's a four and a half inch cut. So hopefully the concrete saw cuts four and a half inches. Hopefully we got all the way through there. But again, real simple to do. If you do need a jackhammer, you could always use one. But usually you can just use your pry bar and get it to crack. And then you just pry the pieces out. But again, this is a really thick pour. I think this was a carport at one time. So look, maybe it's a little thicker. Still should be the same though. It should just be you know, three and a half, four inches. But you can see how easy that cracks. <clears throat> Remember there was a, already a layer of pavers on there. So we had to cut the concrete that is sitting on to get our drain down below. So we'll remove all of this and then we'll trench this out and we're getting closer to uh, laying pipe. Okay, so we've got the area prepped here in the driveways for the channel drain and we'll be ready to make the connection to the existing drain. Remember these existing downspout drains, they run over to a sump pump. And that's what that box is and the ground lids behind the box the sump pump back there. And it actually pumps around that side of the house all the way out to the lake. So we've got this prepped, both sides. We'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit more. And then tomorrow we'll set the channel drain down in and probably get to the concrete as well. Um, you can see a nice area for the channel drain to run through. We've got to make it good uphill, actually, you know, up through the grade a little bit to come back to this drain, but we'll get it to work really good. We'll attach it there with a 90 and a T into the existing drain there. On this side, we've got the sump pump basin installed. We're ready to trench the line. It'll go right alongside the pavers, and then we had to pull a few pavers. We'll get it to come over on this side. And we've got our jackhammer back here because this concrete was so thick that we've got to use the hammer to get it out. But we'll trench a line over to another catch basin right here in this corner. There'll be another basin here. And then it'll be gravity from this point, from the catch basin, as it turns and runs all the way out to the lake. So if you happen to have a jackhammer, great. Makes life really morning, quick and easy with apple drains. Today we're on day two of this install and we're finishing up some of the detail things. Remember yesterday we did quite a bit of saw cutting and moving pavers, things like that. Now we're setting catch basins and we need to get a catch basin here by this door because water's been flooding back into the door area, rotting a lot of the wood here. So what we're gonna do is start by just taking the catch basin apart. Let me show you how you do that. You can use a screwdriver or if you've got a handy dandy black and decker <laughs> you can take these screws out 
Then we're gonna take the grate off. And inside the catch basin, there are two uh, bushings. Basically, one of them has a plug. We're gonna have a single outlet. It's gonna go this way. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this outlet on this side. And it's got little slots, four of them. They, there's a space in here where they lock in place. We get those lined up. And then you just twist it real tight and it locks in place. So this becomes a single outlet going this direction. Put this one on as well. Next, we're gonna set the grate back on the top. I'm not gonna put any screws on there yet because we have a lot more to do. What we wanna do is square this up to the door and I'm just gonna use my eye to square it. But more importantly, we wanna make sure we've got fall from the pavers into the catch basin. So if you can see that bubble, I've got a full bubble going back towards the house. That means if I raise my level, you'll see that there's level. I don't know if you can see that bubble in the picture or not, but it's got plenty of fall to come down to the catch basin. Same thing here, we've got a full bubble back towards the house. So if I raise this end of the level, it's gonna make, it'll find the level spot. We've got downhill flow into the basin. And that's really about it to set a catch basin. You know, I've seen lots of videos where people get so extravagant about catch basins. You know, it's just a catch basin and it basically catches water. It's called a catch basin because you can see where the line sits here and there's a basin at the bottom. Debris sits in the bottom of the basin, drops in, only water comes out. So it's called a catch basin. So let's go ahead and reline that up. The other thing we're going to do is we're bringing an inch and a half PVC pipe from the sump pump on that side of the house is gonna come around. I'm gonna drill into the side of this basin to attach it. And then from here, gravity is gonna take it out to the lake. So the first thing I did was I made a measurement from the end of this pipe to the catch basin. And it's a little bit long over the catch basin because I'm gonna stick it inside. Next, we're gonna use an inch and a half coupling and I like to use these big thick ones, not the little ones. You can see it's got real deep well to hold the pipe together. Also, I've been using Oatly glue, but this Christie's blue is an amazing glue. It works really good. So we're gonna glue that up, put it on both sides, and we're gonna put some on the pipe as well. And I'm gonna twist them on, pound this one on, and then Twist this one on to the discharge until they come together. Just hold it for a second and that's, that's solid. Next, we're gonna go ahead and drill a hole with our handy dandy Black & Decker and a two inch hole saw right into the side of the catch basin. So next, I'm gonna drill a hole with our handy dandy Black & Decker into the side of the catch basin. I want to be a little bit high, but I've got to be at this level. I can't be above here because pavers go back across this cut. So let's go ahead and get that guy started in there. Perfect spot. Take that paper off of there. <laughs> Remember that the two inch hole saw is the exact outer diameter of the inch and a half pipe. So now I can slide this right inside of here and it fits very tight and very perfectly inside. Looks really good. Next we'll square this up one more time and then we can start to put the discharge, which is four inch solid pipe from the catch basin because it's gravity now. So we've got a sump pump coming in. It's gonna go into the basin. The basin picks up surface water, immediate surface water runoff from the pavers, and then we discharge with four inch solid pipe out to wherever we're gonna go, which is out by the lake. Okay, so we've got some more excavation done. Basically, we put another catch basin in here, and this is a, is a six inch round catch basin. And I've got a square adapter so that it fits nicely inside square pavers. <laughs> we can line that up. Um, wherever that's going to sit. I also have a riser so we can take this deeper and we can run a six inch pipe to bring this grate to any grade that we want. So from here, that rain run, <laughs> that runs over to the sump basin over there. We're going to set that sump pump up next. 
as water comes in from the catch basin, which a lot of water comes down these pavers and it floods into this area. So that's all going to run over, be collected. The sump pump's going to lift it up. Then we're going to discharge. I'll hook this discharge line up with a 45 or something here. Um, and then we'll come down through this direction. You can see we've already kind of backfilled some of this yesterday. Comes all the way down, makes a 90. The saw, the concrete saw actually cut a sprinkler, so I had to make a repair there. Um, and then it runs all the way over to the catch basin. And from the catch basin, it'll go out and where the guys are digging, that's the discharge. They've got a long ways to go through the gravel and through the tree roots. If you can see that big oak tree back there, be a lot of roots back there. Tough little dig, they gotta get on it. Okay, so now it's time to drill our inlet line from the catch basin. We need to be at this level down here, so rather than cut off a nipple, I'm just gonna cut a new four inch hole. Makes a perfect four inch hole that will accept our uh, four inch pipe coming from the catch basin into the sump basin. Next I'm going to drill the discharge which is a two inch hole coming out the side. Maybe. Take off our lid that just kind of protects everything. Switch the bit. got a nice two inch hole right here. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, now it's time to set up the Zoller M98. This is a half horsepower pump and it's 110 volts. It pushes about 60 to 80 gallons per minute. That's a couple of trash cans of water every minute. And it sets up the same way as the M53. You start with a male threaded inch and a half adapter that screws into this port. We want to put this in there as tight as we can with our hand. Next, I've cut a small riser, just enough to get above this bar. This is a bar that protects the float right here. We want to glue that in place. Push and hold. That's set. Now we're going to put our check valve on. Remember, check valves only allow water to flow one way. And every check valve is a little different, but you'll see some type of arrow that tells you the flow, direction of flow. These are held together with stainless steel, no hub band, super strong rubber. Works really great. So get that on there. And then we use our handy dandy Black & Decker with a 5 16 inch nut driver to tighten up the clamps. Get them in place. And then just as tight as your drill can make it. And we're all set. So we're ready to set the pump down into the pit and make the measurement from the top of the check valve up to the 90 that's going to send this water out of the sump basin. So let's set the sump pump down into the basin. Now we're going to make a measurement from the top of this, it has, a, has to have a 90, so it's just going to be a short little riser. It'll come up and it'll tie into the discharge, which is right here. Okay, so I've got all the pieces measured and cut and dry fit them together. Don't forget to drill a 3 16 inch hole between the first riser and the check valve. So the, the hole is down here below that check valve. That's a pressure relief valve. Uh, hole and it just there'll be some water that squirts out of it but the pump's so powerful that he won't notice it at all but what that does is it keeps this from getting locked air locked there's a there's a valve in here that you don't want to get air locked or else the pump won't pump so now we're ready to go ahead and glue things up so you can kind of see everything we've got okay so we've got it all glued up and tightened up and we're ready to go ahead and hook up our discharge or excuse me our inlet line coming from the catch basin we'll set that and bring that pipe through there. It's four inch corrugated solid pipe. It'll come over to the sump basin. Sump pump lifts it up and carries it away. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Happy St. Patrick's Day. 
I guess I just dated this video. Anyways, we're installing channel drain here in front of two garages, two different pieces of garages, actually four garages. Let's take a look. So five inch NDS channel drain. I like to use the 10 foot sections, a little less expensive and it works really well. Um, to make your connection for the discharge, you notice it's got a half round piece here and you see this little opening. This actually is gonna slide directly onto the channel drain. It just pops in place and what that's doing is it's letting that water drop down into the pipe and then the pipe's going to carry it away so let's go ahead and set this up at the correct end and i'll show you how we're going to make that connection so a couple of ways you can see the pipe here we need to join to here and it's a very short run across a couple of ways to do it one is to use this adapter and this slides over that piece i just showed you and then we would run corrugated pipe to the Y or the T, whichever we're going to connect with. Another way to do it is to run thin wall PVC. I like to use PVC, but sometimes it just doesn't you know, match up. Um, that piece will snap right onto the discharge of the channel drain. And then we still need to use this adapter that gets screwed together and then a small short insert brings it over to the Y or the T. Looks like we're gonna end up with a Y here to make that connection. And so it's just a real short little piece. I think that's the best way to go here. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we have the channel drain set. Our connection, we started covering up. Tomorrow we'll go ahead and finish by concreting that uh, channel drain down. And then the paver people will come back and bring the pavers right over to it. So basically we need to leave room so you can kind of see this. We need to leave room for them to bring their paver, you know, right up to the channel drain itself. And that's what we'll do. <clears throat> Clean this all up. This one's installed. This one's done. Same thing. Walk over here where you can see it. And... It's ready to go. We just need to concrete it down. We'll blow that all off, clean it off. Great connections. Remember when you make these connections to screw them together because they really do try to come apart um, real simply. And we've got you know real good downhill run as it runs over and goes over and connects to the downspout drain. So we've blown off the sidewalk, the pavers. Remember, the paving company is going to come in here behind us and recut and pave to get all the pavers back in place. But everything's installed. And we're ready to go here. Just a little bit of cleanup, move some more of these bricks, stack them up, get them out of the way. Chuck's blowing everything off over here. He's gonna blow off this patio and it'll pretty much be done. Okay, so we're getting ready to set the channel drain. The first thing that we did, of course, showed you how we hooked it all up. But now we're gonna protect the grates by putting some blue painter's tape across it. That just keeps the concrete from getting down in there and they can easily pull that right off when we're done. Remember I showed you the connection there of the Y, we've already kind of covered that up. We'll do the same thing on the other side, over here. Cover that with the painter's tape and then we're gonna be setting that one you know, to the proper grade and then concreting it in. So here we're mixing up you know, the concrete that's holding that channel drain down in place. We've got several things that we use as a guide. Remember that pavers are going to be put back up to grade. So in other words, we're not setting the, the channel drain in concrete, which is a better way to do it, but it looks pretty nice when you put pavers all the way across. So the only thing that you see is the channel drain. Okay, so we just got you know about four feet more to go. <clears throat> Remember how we're doing this is we're not bringing this concrete to grade. They're gonna put pavers back. So basically we're holding that channel drain down in place. We've got a real nice pitch, you know, just perfectly level coming across the existing channel or existing pavers, sorry. And <clears throat> so when they put the pavers back, you can see my trowel, they'll have to cut to size, but it'll fit perfectly right here and lean right up against you can kind of see, I'll give you the example. See, we're perfect all the way across.
So they'll have a nice fit all the way down through. Same thing on this side. And it really is, it might seem like that's a lot of work, but it's really quick with a concrete saw, you cut pavers in, in a matter of seconds. So we've got a nice channel drain going on. We're almost finished with this side, then we'll kind of sweep it off a little bit. And then we just have another 10 feet to go on the smaller garage. Again, this was a tedious job. So, you know, this was a fairly large job, um, something that the homeowner could definitely tackle themselves. It's not hard to do, um, as long as you think of it as smaller jobs. You know, we did you know, quite a bit of work here, but break it down, make it three, four smaller jobs. The channel drain is the tedious part of all of this because it's a finish and it would be like finishing the kitchen, putting the cabinets in. It's something that you will always see. Underground drains, hey, they could do whatever they want. Nobody can see them. But if you got a finished product, you got to take your time. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. forget about live help video consultation via Skype just $50 per session we can answer any question and help with any project look us up online appledrains.com Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.